And I am reading from Psalm 107, verses 15 through 17. The Word says, Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. The Lord add blessing to his word. This morning we come here to worship God, the one true God. He's worthy of much more than we can give him, but he wants our hearts. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to fellowship with him. But yet we're sinners, and we can't go into his presence as sinners. So I ask you to pray a repentant prayer with me. Let me lead you in a prayer, and I want you to think about the words, and you pray that the Lord would forgive you, and you pray for forgiveness, and you repent of your sin so that we may worship God in spirit. Would you pray with me now? In Jesus' name, let us go to the Lord. Father, we humble ourselves before you, for we know, Lord, that you are God Almighty, creator of all the heavens and the earth, and you made us, and you are holy and righteous. And yet, Lord, we are sinners. We are rebellious, Lord. We have sinned and all fallen short of your glory. But you, Lord, you provided the way. And that way is your Son, Jesus the Christ. He is our Lord and our Savior. We believe that he died on the cross and covered us with his blood, Lord. Please, Lord, you're alive today. And you hear us, Lord, and your spirit is with us. Lead us and guide us in your power. Oh, hallelujah. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy and forgive us. Let us rejoice together. Let us worship you from our hearts. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for every soul, every family that's represented here today. Lord, I lift them up to you. And all those who hear my voice, those that are listening and watching, maybe online or wherever it may be, Lord, may your word, your service, your spirit touch our hearts. Let us draw near to you, Lord. Let us worship you and give you glory. Lord, we want to praise you. We want to please you. And we are weak. We can't do it ourselves. That's why, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. Lord, help us in our weakness to put away the world. Not to worry about what happened yesterday or tomorrow or even this afternoon. But to think about you and your goodness and your mercy and your grace to think about your son and what you have done for us let us worship Lord let us worship in your holy name for Jesus it's all about you and it's in your name we do pray amen praise the Lord holy 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 Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, the blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, a casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. A seraphim and seraphim falling down before thee, with a word and heart, and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 
darkness hide me, though the eye of sinful breath thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power and of love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, a blessed Trinity. Amen. Amen. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord again. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I sing unto the Lord all the earth. God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. I sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Once again, please. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. I sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. For God is great. For God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord.
I hope it here there's more to the singing of the choir than just the, the music and your enjoyment. I hope that you hear the words and think about the words and they touch your heart through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. And so please, when you hear a song, think about it, contemplate the words. Now please stand with me and repeat after me as we go to the Lord in worship. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And be seated, please. And while you're taking your seats, if you would, and I hope you have your Bibles with you, would you turn with me to the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. In fact, that's the whole chapter. That's Hosea 14, verses 1 through 9. Sister Dean's going to read for us in the Korean language. Sister Dean, please. Hosea 14장에서 1절에서 9절, 9절입니다. 이스라엘아 내 하나님 여호와께로 돌아오라. 내가 불의함으로 말미암아 엎드러졌느니라. 너는 말씀을 가지고 여호와께로 돌아와서 아래기를 모든 부, 불의를 제거하시고 선한 발을 받으소서. 우리가 수송아지를 대신하여 입술의 열매를 죽게 드리 드리 드리이다. 우리가 아수르의 구원을 의지하지 아니하며 말을 타지 아니하며 다시는 우리 손으로 만든 것을 향하여 너희를 너희는 우리의 신이라 하지 아니 아니하로니 아니하리오니 이는 고아가 주로 말미암아 긍휼을 얻음이니이다 할지니라 내가 그들의 반역을 고치고 기쁘게 그들을 사랑하리니 나의 진노가 그에게서 떠났음이니라 내가 이스라엘에게 이슬과 같이 같으리니 그가 백합과 같이 피겠고 레바, 레바논 백향목 같이 뿌리가 박힐 것이니라 그의 가지는 퍼지며 그의 아름다움은 감남나무와 같고 그의 향기는 레마, 레바논 백향목 같으리니 그 그늘 아래 거주하는 자가 돌아올지라 그들은 곡식같이 풍성할 것이며 포도나무 같이 꽃이 필 것이며 그 향기는 레바논의 포도주 같이 되리라 에브라임이 말에 에브라임의 말이 내가 다시 우상과 무슨 상관이 있으리요 할지라 내가 그를 돌아 돌아보아 대답하기를 나는 푸른 잔나무 같으니 내가 나로 말미암아 열매를 얻으리라 하리라 누가 지혜가 있어 이런 일을 깨달, 깨달으며 누가 총명에 있어 이런 일을 알겠느냐 여호와의 도우는 정직하니 의인은 그 길로 다니거니와 그러나 죄인은 그 길에 걸려 넘어지리라 아멘 Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 9. Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God. Your sins have been your downfall. Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Assyria cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. I will heal their waywardness and love them freely. For my anger has turned away from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He will blossom like a lily, like a cedar of Lebanon. He will send down his roots. His young shoots will grow. His splendor will be like an olive tree. His fragrance like a cedar of Lebanon. Men will dwell again in his shade and he will flourish like the grain. He will blossom like a vine and his fame will be like the wine from Lebanon. Oh, well, from what more have I to do with idols? I will answer him and care for him. I, I am like a green pine tree. Your fruitfulness comes from me. Who is wise? He will realize these things. Who is discerning? He will understand them. The ways of the Lord are right. The righteous walk in them, but the rebellious stumble in them. Amen. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his holy word. Let us pray, please. 
Our Father in heaven, mighty God, we humble ourselves before you, thanking you, Lord, for this word, and thanking you, Lord, for this message, and I thank you, Lord, for every soul that, Lord, hears this message. And I ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would touch all our hearts and our minds, that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us this day. Lord, we want to draw near to you and please you through this word and this message. May thy good and perfect will be done, for it is in your name, Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. When all this looks like it's over, there's still hope. Still hope. And the first thing I want to say right up front this morning, the first thing I want you to think about is our repentance can bring God's salvation. As believers in Christ, we don't always get what we deserve. And we don't always deserve what we do get. So think about that for a moment. We don't always get what we deserve, and we don't deserve what we get. Do we get everything we deserve? Here we are at the very end of Hosea's prophecy, last chapter. And there's still hope. Even after God has been telling them what's going to happen, God is still calling them. There is still hope. God has been showing his people how they have been treating him. And, and quite frankly, he's had enough. He's had enough of what they're doing. And it is time that he actually punishes his people. But even with that, there is still hope. The last chapter of Hosea begins with a call to repentance. It begins with a prayer. The people of Israel, they needed to seek God's grace. They needed to seek God's forgiveness. They needed to renew their covenant and their alliance to him by renouncing and throwing away their foreign allowances, uh, alliances, their foreign treaties, their foreign dependence. They needed to give up their own reliance on their own military, their own power, their own might, and their self-made images. They needed to throw all that away. In order for God to forgive them, they needed to understand that they had sinned. They needed to understand that and come to realize it and accept it. The return must be accompanied by the words that he gives them. I hope you caught that in our reading. If they humble themselves and ask forgiveness, the Lord will forgive them. The Lord God Almighty, he wants our words to be from our hearts as we offer everything to him, especially praise and song and everything we do, we are to offer it to God to please him. And it must be from our hearts. It might as well be God knows your heart anyway. Israel was not to put up any kind of reliance or treaty upon the nation of Assyria or their own armies or anything else other than God to save them. She was also once and for all to give up her, her fondness for, for man-made idols and, and as her God. They had these idols. Israel could be assured that because God had compassion for the orphan, he would have compassion for Israel because he sees Israel as an orphan. In response, in response to Israel's repentance, God begins to describe the blessings that he would shower on his people, on her, Israel. However, because they had not repented yet, they still have not repent. In fact, they won't repent. They haven't repented until the great tribulation. These blessings that you see here at the end of Hosea 
must be seen really in the future. We see God's grace in action every day, but especially here. We see his healing of their wandering. We see his unconditional love for them. Israel was making commitments to God with their lips, but he wasn't making, they weren't making commitments to God with their hearts. They were saying things, but it wasn't from their hearts. They really didn't mean it. They were just giving God lip service. And God pronounced judgment on them and placed them into captivity. Did the Israelites receive all the punishment that was to should have come their way? What do you think? Did they receive just punishment? God was actually showing them a picture of what was going to happen in their captivity. He was showing what was going to happen to them. And they would begin to worship him through their hearts and it would come out of their lips. Our hearts. Let's talk about our hearts for a second. Repentance comes from the heart through our lips. I know lots of people, and I've seen, and over the years, y'all know I've got a few years on me, and I've seen people say things that they really didn't mean. And I'm not judging them, don't get me wrong, but when they say certain things and they act differently, whether it's the next day or the next week or the next year, I often wonder, do they remember what they said? when they called out to God? Did it, did it come from the heart? Our true repentance comes from our hearts. It comes from our hearts. Verse 2 of our text says, Take words with you and return to the Lord. Say to him, Forgive all our sins and receive us graciously that we may offer the fruit of our lips. Now, Offer the fruit of our lips. Jesus said in Matthew 30, uh, 12, 34, he says, You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. To me, this verse has two distinct meanings in association here. Earlier in Hosea 8, 2, The nation of Israel was using their lips to honor God, but out of their heart are flowing the the things that they disregard. uh, They disregard God. They don't remember him. They really, they do what they want and say what they want. You see, her prosperity, Israel was very prosperous during this time frame, and her prosperity made her forget God. In our text, verse 2, something different is happening, though. God is inviting them to return to him. Yet, he does ask for a price to be paid. They must what? Confess their sins. A real confession from the heart is very hard for us human beings to do. I do not know why. Well, I do know why. Because we're human beings. We don't really want to humble ourselves. We don't want to really confess our sin to anybody. But repentance can radically change the course of events in our lives. If we're truly repentant before God, that can actually change who we are. Israel was headed the wrong way. They weren't going in the right direction. They were going the wrong way. And they didn't seem to want to turn around. The prophet Hosea, he was bringing a message to them, and this message he was bringing was to stop them on their path because the path that they were on led to destruction. 
Our sin destroys our lives. It destroys the lives of people around us. It destroys the lives of our nation. If we're not careful, not just your sin, my sin, everybody's sin together can destroy a nation. God saw that Israel needed to be told that there was hope, though. When we begin to make our sacrifices from our lips through our hearts, true repentance comes. Once repentance comes, we begin to remove the idols of our own making. If we can truly repent, we can put away the idols that we have made. And all of us have idols. All of us put things before God. And repentance removes idols. Verse 3 of our text says, A hill cannot save us. We will not mount war horses. We will never again say our gods to what our own hands have made. For in you the fatherless find compassion. Idols have long been a problem in the worship of Israel because they were surrounded by nations who worshiped idols and they, even though God had told them not to do it, they would start hearing and worshiping these idols. And Remember, first thing they did when they came out of Egypt, what did they do? Build an idol to worship. Here they had put their trust in a nation of Assyria and to ask Syria to be Assyria to be their protector, if you will. Prosperity was also, they felt like prosperity was their savior. They said, oh, if we could be prosperous, if we could have great trade and be rich and wealthy, then we'll be okay, it'll be our savior. The nation had declined morally and, and religiously. They really weren't religious, really following God or obeying God. And that was the state of Israel. And I ask you, today is our nation, this great nation of the United States, are we any different? Are we any different? The nation of Israel was experiencing a time of prosperity like our country was and is. They were acknowledging God with their lips but, and practicing the religion like we do. They had entered into relationships that were not good for them like we have as a nation. And thus it caused them to forget God because they were so prosperous. Because God had blessed them so much, they forgot him. They forgot it came from him. And they raised up idols. And this is the same thing we as a society and as a nation, it's the same thing we have done and are doing. Thomas Carlyle, the great historian and Scottish writer, he received a letter from a young man asking him a question. He asked him to tell him how he could be a great teacher. The young man wanted to teach, and he wanted to be a great teacher, so Carlyle replied to his letter with this. He says, you be what you want your pupils to be, because all else is unblessed mockery. Well, we know that because we hear all the time, what? Do as I say, not as I do. God had chosen the nation of Israel to teach the world about him. That's why God had chosen them to, to be his witness. He wanted other nations to see Israel and to say, wow, look at the blessings, look at them. God has blessed them. They're God, they're acting, they worship God. In fact, they, they wanted to, they, God wanted them to be the measuring device that the nations could measure themselves by as to how they worship God. Instead of being the teacher, though, they had become the student and very quickly and very willingly, they, didn't, they weren't teaching people to worship God. That's exactly what God is showing the nation of Israel here, that to be genuine teachers in their worship, 
It had to flow out of their hearts and come out of their lips so that all the idols that they had built in their hearts would be destroyed. We too, you and I, we must also have the same experience. We must become the teacher that our pupils would be. God is our teacher. He is showing his pupils what he wants them to learn. But it must start with repentance in the heart so that we can tear down the idols of our life. It all starts in our hearts, not in our minds. Our hearts. When our lips overflow with our heart's love, we can tear down our idols. In the tearing down of our idols, we can remove the wrath of God. Hallelujah. But it must come from our heart. And repentance removes God's wrath. God said in verse 4 of our text, it says, I will heal their waywardness, and love them freely, for my anger has turned away from them. You see, the nation of Israel had made alliances with Assyria because they were afraid of losing their prosperity, and as an alliance also in case of war or something, or they needed this treaty, they needed this alliance with Assyria. But God said, don't do this. He forbid, he said, don't do this. Depend on me. Don't depend on them. Due to this alliance, they became, and they began to allow what? Pagan worship. Because they had to show Assyria that they cared about them. So whatever Assyria was doing, guess what Israel started doing? The very same thing. And they allowed pagan worship in the table, uh, in the temple, and even in their way of life. They allowed what the Assyrians were worshiping, and as you know, they worshiped many gods, and some really bad gods, these little g-gods, was destroying people. And here they are now, Israel, because of this alliance, they were doing the same thing. And God was on his way to bring judgment upon the nation. Although the Israelites knew God's power and knew how many times after time after time after time he had delivered them from their enemies and they were still afraid of the world. They were still afraid of other nations. They were fearful that maybe this time, maybe this time if something happens, God is not big enough to do what he said he would do. Maybe... God's not really there. Maybe he don't hear us. And I got to tell you, I think we've all been there. I think we've all fought that way to some degree. Wanting God to change our lives, but afraid. If he does change our lives, what will he ask me to do? Have you ever thought that way? Have you ever said, you know, I know I could ask God for something. I know I could ask God for blessings. But if I do, what's God going to ask me to do? What's God going to tell me to do? And it keeps you from asking God. It keeps you from being close to God. Because you don't really want to do what God wants to do. Paul wrote in Philippians 4, 19, he says, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. There's always enough of everything from God. Everything. Enough money. Uh, it's, it's, it's for God's glory and not our own, but everything God gives to you, everything God gives to me, is for his glory. It's all his anyway. He just gives it to us every moment. Every breath I take comes from God. 
not for my glory, it's for his glory. In fact, it is the abundance of God's grace that the nation of Israel was even able to repent and return to God and actually change his judgment upon him. God still was calling his people. And we too can deflect God's judgment from our lives. All we have to do, and I'll say it again, now you may be tired of it already, I don't care, repent of our sins. Oh, I got to say it one more time. Repent of your sins. And I'm not trying to be funny. It's the truth. In their captivity, God was going to show them compassion. He wouldn't destroy them. The fact that he didn't destroy them, he brought them out and put them in captivity. He could have destroyed them, but he didn't. He would give them an opportunity to worship him with their hearts, which would come forth through their mouths and lead to the tearing down of the idols that they had set up. Remember what he said, take these words with you. Due to this, God would hold back his judgment from them. Hallelujah. Take the words. Take these words. Take words with you and turn, return to the Lord. You see, if we could truly repent of our hearts and truly turn, God would withdraw his judgment on us all. In conclusion, it's a simple sermon. It's a simple thing. A way that we can bring repentance through our lips from the heart is to place ourselves, you and me, we place ourselves daily before God and allow him to use us. That's how, that's how we draw near to God. We place ourselves before God. How do we do that? We do that in prayer. We give him our hearts. We give him our lives. Paul wrote in Romans 12, 1 and 2, he says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Many of us don't know what the will of God is in our lives because we have not repented and given him ourselves. We hang on to ourselves. We want to do what we think is right. We want to do what we want to do. And therefore, we don't know what God's will is in our lives. I've had many people tell me, I'm not sure what God wants me to do. And I, tell, and I take them to this verse, I say, have you really given yourself to the Lord? Have you? We too, all of us, we have sought the world for our happiness. What makes you happy today? You and I, many times, we turn to the world, something in the world that makes us happy, just like the nation of Israel did. If I ask you what makes you happy, most of, them, most of you are not going to say, well, it's, it's the Lord Jesus. He makes me happy. Now, you might say that to me now because that's what you think I want you to say. But the truth must come from your heart. What makes you happy? Getting a big raise, getting a lot of income tax money back, that make you happy? Things of the world that make you happy? 
And you know what? I understand that. And believe me, God understands that too. But the most happiness should come from Him. Not these things that will go away and be destroyed. We've all sought things of the world for happiness. In fact, some here today may still be seeking the strength from the world instead of the strength from God in His grace. It's only by the grace of God that I can stand before you this morning. It's only by the grace of God I have life. And it's only by the grace of God you have life. So please, accept God's grace. Accept it this morning because it's the best thing that you'll ever have. And guess what? There's still hope as long as you have breath. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. We've all, Lord, like stray sheep, have gone astray, and we're all sinners, and we've all failed you. Lord, I know we say that, and many times we think it, Lord, but let it come from our heart of hearts, knowing, knowing full well, Lord, that if we can truly repent of our sins, if we can truly give you our lives, then, Lord, you will change us, you will use us, and you will receive glory from us. Not wrath, Lord. We won't get your wrath. We will be in your presence and with eternal life in the name of Jesus. That's why, Lord, we humble ourselves before you this morning, asking you to help us, to lead us and guide us. And if there's someone this morning here, Lord, who has not received your salvation, something is making them hold back, Lord. Somehow, Lord, take that out of the way and let them come to you. We pray for the lost. We pray for those that don't know you as their Lord and Savior. Let us all receive you and come into your presence before it's too late. For it is in your name, Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.